we're here in the Jordan, and uh, on this weekend we're going to have a very special event about art. Uh, could you first tell us a little about the theme of the uh, the open ateliers here in the Jordan? Yes, uh, the theme is the draad of uh, Ariadne. That was the, 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 the file of Ariadne. Uh, it is the Greek uh, story of uh, uh, Tissus who went uh, to the labyrinth and had to fight with the Minotaurus. And uh, Ariadne helped him to come out, out of the labyrinth with a file. And we, uh, we give a file to the visitors uh, to find art and artists and statements of the art, artists. And uh, uh, they will find blue files on the ground and they will see blue flags uh, at the houses where the ateliers uh, are. And uh, yeah, what what more? What are the f they will find statements in the ateliers. Mm. Yes, and um, the statements are kind of why, why I'm doing that. What is behind my my art? And what is the motor behind the real motor? Is that uh, no? Is it money of whatever, whatever? Everybody has another statement, so we are kind of Ariadne with 70 faces, because everybody, everybody's different. Yeah. Yes. That's, okay. that's. Now, I'd like to ask you, um, we're here kind of in the centrum of the, the idea, mm -hmm. and uh, what's going on here in this building? Um, what's going on? It's a bit of a techie building, in which um, we tried to put together an exhibition in which Every artist puts in one painting or one sculpture. Um, it gives the visitor the opportunity to make a choice because there are 70 ateliers, which is a bit lot. It's a lot. Um, uh, but the whole thing in, in such a thing as this art festival, that we try to move away from what we already did, which was an atelier route, and try to give it some depth. Um, and try to, uh, because in the art world, you've just been to the Rai, you see there's a lot going on, nobody knows exactly what's real art and not. Um, there's another story about the emperor without clothes. Um, it's very hard to know nowadays if there's some substance in the art you see or not. And the fun in going to an atelier is that you can really talk to an artist and find out if there's substance. Not only that, if if what's being in this painting it can really connect to where you are and what you like. Um, the idea of the labyrinth is that you have to make choices. There's no general idea about art. Uh, everybody has to make choices. The visitor has to make choices, uh, which art he likes or not. And the artist has to make choices in uh, how, he, how he moves in his work and, and creates his work black or white or huh, yellow and the color and the form etc that choices idea is in the is in the labyrinth you have to make a choice to come to a certain point and in that point there will be a meeting between the artist and the visitor am i clear that's quite clear yeah. now maybe you can tell me uh when this starts uh and a little about where the people should come to see the uh, the exhibition and, and what uh, aids you have to give them, uh, or let them find their way around the Jordan. Yeah, yeah it starts Saturday, 10th of June, uh, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, <laughs> here in uh, uh, Westerstraat uh, 187. And uh, there, a uh, visitor can orientate what he should like to, to see, and he has to, to choose. And uh, it, it is every day, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, at 12 o'clock to uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, yeah, it is uh, during three days uh, here. You can start here and you can get a book, you can get a catalog, and you can get a plan, and then you can walk the route along in the blue files. Uh, and there is what we didn't talk about yet, that are the acts. We have some acts that will... That uh, means where we have also some music, we have street music, uh, world music on the street and also in the ateliers. Uh, and we and have lectures. And we have, yeah. So uh, artists are, have been invited to have a lecture in the atelier, a short one, not a long one, in which they talk about the subject that they really like. So uh, Susanna talks about um, dreams, how dreams work and relate to art. 
um, uh, a guy Cordona, he lived with the pygmies in, in Africa and he talks about how that changed him in, in, as an artist and as a person. Um, um, I talk about uh, e social ecology, I call it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a big problem in Europe that many people come in and they're kicked out of the system because they, they are not uh, accepted as a political asylum, for the political asylum. And, but this keep on living here and I think that um, maybe artists can have a creative uh, entrance to that problem. Um, there are many different subjects that people talk about and the idea is that uh, it gives an extra kind of background to the art they're making, which makes it more fun. So you can have a lecture, you can talk to artists, you see where the art is coming from, you have a catalog, which are a lot of poems, um, and you have an idea how to move around the labyrinth. That's, uh, that's what makes it maybe mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. and fun, you know? <laughs> maybe you can meet the real Minotaurus. You should really look out. Yeah, but you can call the police. They cannot guarantee anything. No, yeah. police can't help it. Oh? You have to solve it yourself. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much for telling us about the Ordan uh, and the event this weekend. It sounds like a great deal of fun. Yeah. silk screens before and then you have Dutch landscapes and Dutch colors but if you look uh, international India for example the use of the colors of the people are very bright and exotic Thailand India Pakistan and uh, India uh, Sri Lanka I've been there uh, several times <coughs> and um, sometimes in India if you come to a nice fort and the people are really dry, dressed exotic, very transparent pink and even the men have turbans with pink colors and earrings and camels. There was one place in the desert, um, Jaisalmer, and in the middle of the desert they built a fort on top of a big flat uh, hill and it is really exotic. Small streets, corridors, men with uh, camels and very exotic. Yeah. I also see through running through a lot of your paintings a kind of romanticism of sorts. Is this uh, part of what you express? Yeah. Well, the life is very hard and I hope to bring some happiness by color and, and the way I paint. That's true. Now, primarily, uh, your medium seems to be aquarelle. Is this uh, what you've always painted in, and do you still well, do it? Yeah, well, a lot of silk screens before, and I'm using now uh, acrylic. But the nice thing of watercolor is I try to, uh, f to catch the light, and the light is really coming out of the painting. The, the, tran the transparency of the, uh, the paint is very beautiful, and sometimes you can paint layers over each other, complementary colors, for example, pink and green. Sometimes the green is coming through and sometimes the pink is coming through. And <clears throat> I'm like a poet, looking around always like what the, the colors Im impress me. They give me a nice feeling and then I've, I can do something about it. Hey, you told me something interesting just um, before we started here, that you sometimes give group painting lessons yeah, to executives. Uh, one of the main things last time, um, it's called Let's Meet at Art Event. Companies like KLM, ABN, they like to meet each other, 
uh, besides having meetings and it's sometimes very bored and if they can think about their future or their company while painting it's a nice uh, way uh, of doing they uh, put on big overalls and sometimes nice hats and in the beginning it is very difficult they don't know what to do but if they have to work together they make a plan and after a few hours the the result is there they have something sometimes a big painting and they can hang it up in their company sometimes the the ideas is uh, what about the future and how what can we do about it and while talking about it so talking about it is also very important before painting i always say uh, if you have a group of people for dinner you can do a uh, hutspot burko, you, you put it together and you have something to eat. But if you want to do it good, you have to build it up to something special. Even the small colors uh, at the dessert, uh, you bring it up to a higher level. If the companies have an idea to bring out, it's one of the best things. Uh, make a good plan and, and so you can do in painting too. Now you're participating this weekend in the Open Atelier. How yeah. can people come and see you? Well, the, the central exhibition is normally my studio, but there are a lot of places, so I give it to the group, and I'm really next to it, and uh, we expect 6,000 people here. And uh, I hope the sun shines and everybody has a nice day. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today. I paint mostly flowers because I like the colors and the, uh, the forms and the easy to get and not as expensive as uh, uh, models and uh, yeah I, the, uh, I like to, um, to paint uh, the colors especially. Well the colors are quite brilliant in your, in your flowers. Uh, and there is a tradition in Dutch painting of mm -hmm. flower painting, isn't there? Uh, I, do you see yourself in that Dutch tradition of flower painting? I hope so. I hope uh, I continue the tradition a little. Yeah. Now you, you do some other forms of art besides mm -hmm. just the, um, the paintings. Could you tell us a little about that? Yeah, I also do uh, linoleum uh, cuttings, or how do you call it? Blocks. Uh, blocks. Uh, not that, m that much anymore because uh, I had a sore arm, but because uh, it's very um, um, hard to, of heart, it's uh, in, um, it, it needs a lot of uh, physical uh, uh, inspanning. So more than painting, so uh, I uh, didn't do it uh, much uh, last years, but. It's a, a favorite uh, way of expressing myself, yeah. Now with your paintings, uh, are you painting them just as flowers or are they metaphorically speaking s symbolic of anything else? No, no it's just, f just a, um, a way of um, being um, busy with colors and form. There's nothing, uh, not a deeper um, thing uh, behind it, no. Could you tell me, have you a uh, particular artist that you find that have either inspired you or that you like their work and it feels uh, some of closeness or affinity mm. to your own? Yeah, I like uh, von Jawlensky very much. He has this very nice colors and 
um, simple um, um, things he paints, a um, um, still life or a person, and mostly um, filling the whole painting uh, with not a lot behind it, just one person or a few uh, flowers in a vase, so that I like him very much. Yeah. Uh, getting closer to home, some of your paintings remind me a little bit of uh, the man more famous for grids uh, and had to make his fame in New York. Uh, I, I, do you have any influence by Mondrian? Oh, I like his early paintings uh, very much. Yeah, that, um, um, the flowers and the landscapes, that's f f also a favorite uh, of mine. And also um, this Russian artist, what's his name? Um, no. Manovich? No, no, he, he so went okay. to uh, Belgium and later to the south of France and there he killed himself. But he made also uh, uh, the style, that's his name. And um, he also makes very nice paintings. Yeah. So tell us, uh, you're participating in this open atelier mm -hmm. in the Jordan. How can people come and see your paintings and uh, when uh, will you be open? Um, we'll be open at Saturday and Sunday and mo Monday of the Pinkster weekend from 12 to 6. And we have a uh, central exhibition at the Westerstraat. There hangs or uh, there's one, one uh, piece of art of every uh, participating uh, artist. And um, the best thing is to go there and choose your favorite painter or sculpture or uh, um, you, you jewelry maker. And uh, then visit, uh, make your own route, because it's, it's a lot of uh, Atelier 70 in one weekend. It's, it's very much... So I, when I do a, a atelier route, I mostly pick out my favorites and I visit them. And um, it's a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. Okay, you're welcome. Rob, maybe you could tell me uh, a little about where you get your inspiration for your paintings. Mostly, uh, my I find my inspirations after holidays, and uh, uh, then I can make series, uh, six, seven, eight uh, paintings. But uh, sometimes that will suddenly stop, and then it's very difficult to try a new new subject. So I went at that time to, uh, when it happens, uh, in uh, walking in Amsterdam, or uh, visit artists, uh, studying uh, animals, or uh, birds, and so on. And uh, uh, then I can continue, yes. I noticed part of your, uh, the motifs that you use also have to do with flying. Is this something uh, that's recurring in your uh, art? Yes, it's uh, difficult to explain, uh, and uh, I myself can understand it. Uh, what the reason is, but when I was three, four, five years old, I, in my dreams, I started like a bird. Uh, I, was, I was trying with my wings to uh, leave the, the room, and uh, when I came up and up and up, and was looking around, and uh, was uh, uh, saw buildings and landscapes and people, and uh, that dream is always coming uh, till. I guess I was 30, 35, and then it stopped. But always uh, I'm uh, interested in uh, birds, in the, when I travel in the, in the Pyrenees or in the Alps, I'm studying uh, birds. Uh, and parapenta, for, in, uh, for, for instance, it was for me too a subject to paint parapenta. 
uh, near the uh, mountains and uh, uh, with Tamik going up and up and down. It, uh, it's, it's funny, but uh, it's colorful too, the, uh, the, the sails and the, 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 the colors of the, the sails. And, uh, yes. Here in the Ordon during this open atelier weekend, each of the artists are in some way expressing a philosophy or a poem or something. What's yours for this weekend? My philosophy? Uh, in, in, in a commercial way or uh, whatever you're going to express this weekend no, I, I, sh I like to tell uh, people, visitors who I am, why I'm creating uh, sculpture uh, why I uh, uh, paint uh, my, uh, my hobbies my uh, philosophy uh, my way of living that's I like to interest people for Rob Holman uh, you uh, you paint in aquarelles and uh, and uh, you also sculpt. What uh, what are your subjects in sculpting? Um, mostly uh, uh, animals and uh, men and men and animals together. Perhaps you can see it. Uh, dreams do. There's a torso of a uh, uh, steer. Uh, uh, what is a steer? And it. Uh <laughs> Bull? Yes, yes, with uh, uh, people who are uh, uh, on holidays, uh, it was in my dream once, uh, and uh, birds too, uh, you can see it in the window, yes. Now your paintings are very colorful, oftentimes uh, as an artist we we have unconscious or conscious influences from previous painters of the other generations. Who would you say is an influence on you, or who do you really admire as a painter? Uh, Kees van Dongen, and uh, uh, Impressionists, but uh, even uh, Expressionists. Uh, uh, but uh, also we had, uh, in the beginning, a talk about... Uh, she is living in. Uh, she's coming from uh, South Africa, uh, but she's living here in Amsterdam. She's making portraits, but uh, I can't find her name. Uh, uh, Marlene Dumas, I admire very much. Yes, and uh, I have a lot of lot of painters who I admire. Yes. So all all in all, how long have you been a painter? And uh, tell us a little about your career as a painter. Uh, after my study at the academy in Maastricht in the south of the uh, Netherlands, I uh, was studying marketing. Before I was thinking I have to earn money and uh, can I live with? Uh, can I earn my my money with with painting? But I was interesting too in in uh, the layout of of. Uh, 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 papers and so on, the magazines, and uh, so I studied uh, marketing and I was uh, uh, busy in uh, advertising uh, at the uh, uh, side of the agency, but uh, too at the side of the uh, firms uh, and enterprises. And uh, well, I was uh, busy in advertising during almost ten years. But then I was, uh, it was a hard, uh, hard business, uh, very stressful. So I decided to stop and to concentrate only in uh, paintings. And then I started with giving lessons in, in France. And uh, well, it was in that time very unique. I had, uh, I believe, one colleague. And now when you are looking at the papers, uh, you can see perhaps at, uh, at uh, 80, 85, 19 spots in France, but even in, in Portugal or in every country in Europe, you can uh, have uh, lessons for amateurs. And uh, I have the, the idea uh, that you can't give uh, no more uh, money. It's such a... Uh, great number of artists who are giving now lessons abroad. So tell us this uh, this week in the Jordan, how can people uh, get to your 
your atelier and when will you be open? Uh, the three days of uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday now, uh, between uh, six o'clock, uh, uh, twelve o'clock, and uh, six in the evening. And uh, oh, you mean uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 at other moments? Uh, well, I'm open, and uh, when people like to come in, I have a little showroom here, a small uh, uh, gallery, and. Uh, uh, sometimes I uh, sell my work here, or, or my artwork, or my uh, sculptures, and uh, sometimes I try to have an exposition. And uh, within six weeks, I have a new exposition uh, exposition in Amsterdam, out west, out west, for uh, the sixth of July till the end of August, uh, seven weeks. So it's a nice uh, long period. Yes. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today. You're welcome. Yes. Tell us first a little about how you got into painting, or did did you always want to be a painter? And uh, no, I uh, I like painting. I liked painting always. And uh, when I'm um, when I went to Amsterdam for studying, uh, well, I I doubted after the high school uh, to go to the art academy or doing something else. And uh, I. Uh, but I, I didn't want to go to the academy because I had to do all these uh, technical things and I didn't like that. So I went to study political science and uh, there I met a person uh, who, uh, who studies political science too and um, was at the uh, Rijks Ac- Academy and he said to me, he saw my paintings and he said, well, go to the academy. And uh, well, I did and uh, I uh, was allowed to, to study there in the evening because by day I studied political science and um, uh, and I w- didn't inte- uh, intend to be an artist but in the years it's uh, well it worked out <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah because uh, uh, because uh, at that time I I couldn't uh, I, I hadn't any idea what uh, uh, what um, is moving what an artist is doing his life uh, how can you a paint the whole day and not one day but week after week after week I mean what's in the mind of these persons I thought I, I couldn't think anything about uh, yeah I, I hadn't uh, an imagination about that but well in the time when I when I studied uh, on the academy I had contact with uh, my teacher and with other persons and we talked a lot about it and I read a lot about it and then yeah, slowly it uh, began to uh, to uh, to start so in my head. Something <coughs> there was something changing, and uh, when I uh, was finished with my poli- with political science, well, I I uh, I knew that I should be a painter, and uh, and I I worked uh, since then. Well, that is the story. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, uh, as I look around, your your paintings have a a sort of uh, an outsider look or uh, a tableau with uh, almost a voyeur looking in at a scene. What would you say that, from your point of view, your paintings are about? Well, uh, <laughs> it, well, it's a, this is this observation. I, uh, I. Uh, uh, I can understand, and it is uh, well. I feel like that, so it's it's. I mean, it's not something I wanted to express. Uh, I, I think painters express uh, themselves uh, totally. This with everything, with your happiness, with your uh, fears, with everything, with your loneliness, and uh, but if you if you say this, then I I can imagine because I uh, I, I I have this feeling more or less to be an outsider 
and, uh, and it's not what I want, but uh, it was always like that. And it, well, that's about the, maybe the, the expression or the, or the impression that it makes to other people. But it's, uh, I mean, do I uh, answer the question or do I have to tell more? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Could you tell me maybe uh, what, as you were studying art and, and looking at a lot of art, what artists made big impressions on you or what do you still feel are some of the artists that uh, influenced your work? Um, well, uh, I, had, I had always the, the question, how can you uh, how how can you um, compare a Rembrandt with a Mondrian or how where where is it about and all the, and I of course I uh, I try to understand and I uh, I uh, like these paintings and um, uh, but I'm but I my my um, uh, influence uh, of I'm. Uh, influenced by a lot of people, I like uh, I like Mondrian, I like uh, Franz Hals because he is so uh, virtu virtuous. Eh? How do you say that? Yeah, virtuous. virtuous. And uh, um, but what I try to uh, is that the, in the last uh, or the, the former century, there are a lot of um, uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, uh, Research, research. Yeah, this uh, uh, the expression, the abstract uh, painting, and it was and the structural painting structure, and it it's all about um, research. And I I think that we have to uh, we have to use this uh, this uh, research and not. Uh, I mean, it's not the end, but you have to. I think we have to use that in a in a um, uh, in an in an uh, figurative way. That's what I, well, what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do, and b but there are a lot of. Uh, I mean, uh, Picasso is very nice, but I mean, it's it's co totally different than than I am. But it was, uh, yeah, and and yeah, there's so a lot of. Uh, I like Morandi very much because he is he is working at this uh, at this point between the abstract uh, abstract way of looking and the figurative way of looking. Yeah? There's a non-figurative and a figurative of way. That's what I, uh, what's very nice, I think. Now, in your paintings, I've noticed that architecture plays uh, an important part in shaping the, yes. the concept. Is, uh, what does this have to do with? What is? Th what, what is the architectural influence? Yeah, the well, you have to you have to paint something. I mean, <laughs> I mean, architects. I'm, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, houses, people, trees, uh, animals. So sometimes, uh, that's life. <laughs> uh, sometimes a car and uh, well, but I'm, I'm working uh, uh, a period with the same, well, not symbols, but the same signs, the same things, trees or. Uh, a s typical way, a sort of house, and then it's it's changing and uh, yeah, but it's nothing uh, nothing special. <laughs> well, tell me, if someone wants to come and visit your uh, atelier this weekend in the Jordan, where is it located, and uh, will you be open like everyone else? Yes, I will be open like everyone else, <laughs> from uh, twelve to six. And it's uh, at the Marnixkade, a uh, 39, and it's only three stairs. <laughs> and it's not, uh, I mean, it's on the plattegrond, the map. It's not right on the map. It's, uh, where is number one? That's my place. And I'm number 15. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being with us. Enjoyed talking with you. Thank you. Okay. Tell us a little about your paintings. Now, I know it seems to be influenced by surrealism, 
but uh, you tell me. Yes, uh, uh, indeed, I'm influenced by the Surrealists, and uh, um, I'm painting my dreams. That w w uh, I mean, I paint my inner world, because I think it's very important to live in your inner world also. And I just paint intuitively. Uh, I, I, I start with a certain idea and I just let happen things. And I like to work with colors, not thinking about um, is it nice or should people like it. Just what, what I feel about in the moment. And when I make a portrait, I let uh, uh, happen my feelings. What colors are with this person? So I don't really uh, look what persons are wearing, but just what I feel like. And after a while, I just start with... Uh, making composition and then after a while I, I, I start to feel it and then just uh, let it happen. And most of people are very uh, 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 astonished and I, they really uh, like it. <laughs> so the colors that you often choose in your paintings are more uh, along the lines of what you feel intuitively something would look like in a portrait or something what, how it would seem? Yeah, yeah, it is indeed, it is just, uh, uh, just following the feeling. Now, oftentimes in, in painting, certainly the Surrealists, we're dealing with the unconscious. Yeah. Uh, is this something that you convey in your paintings or that you are dealing with uh, unconscious ideas? Yes, indeed. I work, I think, more or less totally with unconscious things. I just, uh, uh, I follow my dreams. Uh, I mean, dreams, what I dream in the night. But I have also daydreams, so it just uh, it happens. And when I just uh, uh, I, I make a painting, I see a, a bird flying, and I think, oh, what is this bird doing here? And just uh, paint it. I don't know really why. Sometimes I think it's really crazy, but just do it because it seems to be like that. And then uh, there's something uh, developing, and. I'm mostly I'm satisfied of, uh, after I think, oh, that was it. But in a moment, sometimes I don't really know. Now, there's a painting over here that I was noticing that is a, uh, maybe a hundred tomatoes yeah. f flying around in the air. Yeah. Was this something that you dreamed? No, no. This, that was not a dream. It was uh, someone wanted me to paint tomato tomatoes. And uh, I just tried something to make me tomatoes. And uh, it was very funny to do, but it's not really a dream. So, no, it's, <laughs> in this case, not true. <laughs> now, in the Jordan this weekend, uh, each of the artists that you can visit in their atelier, yours being one of them, uh, are going to talk about their <coughs> philosophy of painting or their ideas or read a poem. Yeah. Is there something that you're going to do uh, this weekend? Yes, I'm talking about dreams, of course, because I'm very interested in symbols in dreams and in the symbolism or in the surrealistic art in uh, connection with hermetic philosophy. So I'm really fascinated about dreams. I know I shall talk about that. Now, when people are passing through the Jordan, um, how would they get to your place and uh, when Will you be available and ready for them? Uh, yes, um, yeah, we are open from 12 uh, until 6 o'clock. And um, people can reach me very easy uh, by following the blue files on the ground. Uh, there are a lot of uh, ateliers here in the Jordan, so you will see all the blue flags and the blue files on the ground. So I think you will easily find it. Now, how did you first come to painting, if you might, uh, if you could tell me? How I started to paint? Um, yeah, I just uh, was fascinated about my dreams, indeed, and I, I decided to paint them. And I realized it was very difficult to do it because you have a, a certain uh, um, uh, uh, picture in you, but it is difficult to realize that, that it's really that what you have seen. But um, I, I realized if I really f following it, I, I really will come out uh, and, and then I will get something uh, uh, to know, some, I get something to know what I didn't know before. So it's a certain process what is going on. 
while I'm painting. And um, uh, so I can learn from my dreams. I start with a dream and maybe something other is coming out, but I really learn something of it. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. It's um, some beautiful paintings and I hope you uh, have a good success this weekend. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
Well, that would lead me to a question that sometimes perplexes me. Here we are in the 21st century, and uh, art used to represent something that told us something about God or told us about uh, uh, morals or whatever. What do you see that art represents here at the beginning of the 21st century? Now, it's, I, I see it as a yeah, very... Everyone is looking for something to express something, and, and uh, in most cases it is an expression of... Uh, the ego feelings and what 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 man thinks about himself, and uh, yeah, that uh, when you look at that kind of art, you always get a kind of uh, recognition, but that won't help you farther. I I think art uh, has a, a function, like formerly a religion uh, could do, and that is to uh, bring you back to yourself. And uh, when I can see that. There, I, there I see uh, that's that's art for me. When, when a person gets in contact with the artwork, uh, the artwork is uh, in fact uh, some of the motor, uh, the, the engine for a process in the person itself, and uh, that can uh, enliven and yeah, enlighten the person. And if an artwork does that. Yeah, it's it's a kind of capacity that it has, but it uh, it is not necessary for art. Uh, it can also be music and poetry. But I uh, think that the process of of growing. Yeah, I think that there there's more art in in the person than in in the painting. Well said. Um, I look around and I see what appears to me to be a lot of uh, uh, Indian influences around your um, studio here. Is India kind of muse for you? Yeah, in a way. Uh, I have especially used it because uh, India is famous for its colors. And uh, I, I want to get uh, the feeling uh, what colors are and what colors can do. And uh, India is is uh, one country where, where colors really shine, where they are bright, and uh, that's not so. Uh, that's hard to find in Holland that, that this kind of brightness. So I always look for Indian people, Indian dance, Indian books, and Indian clothes, and uh, Indian things, and I surround me with that. So uh, to uh, to help me to understand what a color can do, because uh, yeah, color color is God. Eh? You can say. Now, this weekend in the Ardan is um, Open Atelier weekend. Could you tell the people where your studio is located and when they might come to visit you and look at some of your very interesting and very diverse art? Now, uh, during uh, this Easter uh, weekend, that is Easter, uh, it's here open from uh, 12 to 6. And that is here below. I have a uh, space I can use for uh, the exhibition, and otherwise they can uh, get on the other side. That is here at uh, the Bloemgracht, uh, the Flower Channel, the Bloemgracht, and there is there a big store, and there I have uh, I have a permanent exposition of the paintings, and there I have uh, still more room. There are 200 paintings in all different uh, teams uh, uh, are there exposed. Yes, thank you very much for being with us today. It's a delight to be here in your studio. Oh, I enjoyed you too. development uh, follow uh, my life so my style uh, change 
And I don't, uh, I uh, accept uh, that. And I don't uh, want to limit myself to one strong style. As I look around at your paintings, I, I see that you haven't limited yourself to one style. Yeah. You've chosen a lot of different ones. Mm -hmm. Currently, what, um, what are you... Well, I know that here in the Jordan this weekend, everybody is going to, to the visitors, express their philosophy about their mm -hmm. painting. So what is your philosophy about your painting? Philosophy, it's, it's a very big uh, world. Um, because I don't, I don't want to to think too much about art. I just, uh, I prefer to let me seduce the, uh, from some things and to make some things out of it. So I'm, I'm somebody who, I just feel like I. Um, I am like a sponge. I receive things. I receive energy. I uh, I get attracted, and uh, I uh, and I let and I get uh, I get uh, seduced. And when I'm seduced, I want to do some things about it. <laughs> and you can see that I have a lot of uh, that a lot of things uh, seduce me. <laughs> hey, you told me that currently you're living both in Holland and in Curaçao. Yeah. Has that affected your art? Yes, 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 a lot, a lot. Because uh, the I was talking about seduction. Uh, when I'm there, I'm living a big garden, a uh, lot of uh, nature, flowers, uh, birds around me. When I'm living in Holland. I'm living uh, in the Jordan, in the city, and um, it's uh, not difficult to mix those two way of life, but uh, I don't want to uh, to choose for uh, one of an other, so I accept the city and I accept uh, the Caribe, as, and that you can see that in, on uh, with my work uh, too.